Okay guys, stick around for a practical demonstration of exactly what I am about to show you on the whiteboard inside the office. Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back. I'm going to show you a couple of small tricks to help you not worry about the backlash values of your machine. Uh, unfortunately, the y-axis is going to be a little bit different than the x-axis. X is a little bit easier. But I'm going to show you two different ways. One way completely eliminates the backlash. I don't care how sloppy your machine is. And the other way will be dependent on whether or not you have an indicator. Okay, let's take a look. Simple pocket. First thing you got to do, and the first thing I usually do when I go to any shop, is on the x-axis on your table, one end of the crank has a large ball and the other end has the part that you crank with. When you set up your machine, make sure that the cranks are 180 degrees opposed because if one is heavier on the end than the other per crank and they're both in line the cranks will have a tendency to flop if you have them 180 degrees out one handle up while one handle is down they'll neutralize each other and they'll stay where you put them so it's a really good little thing to do if your machine doesn't allow you to do that figure out how to do it and get it done that being said, let's look at the pocket that we're cutting. Once again, the zero position is in the back left corner of your part. When you mill a pocket like this, sooner or later, the backlash, now let's assume you do not have a digital readout. This is specifically for no luxury of a digital. You have to worry about the backlash. I'm going to start right here in this corner. This is important, see if you can follow along. Here's your starting point. You're going to drive here. These are bounce points, right? These are corners. Now, in order to get the spindle from the zero point over that first corner, the table has to move towards the spindle. When it does, what's going on? Clockwise on the Y, right? Clockwise. So this shift right here is a clockwise rotation. Easy. Continue to crank to run down to this corner. What is it? It's clockwise. If you're right-handed, you're using this dial here. This is also a clockwise move. So now you're over here, clockwise. Now you got to go up here. Now what happens? Mr. Backlash steps in and ruins your whole day because you're not unsure of how much backlash you have. So this is now counterclockwise. Also known as counterproductive. <laughs> All right, we're going to move back over to this side. Once again, counterclockwise. Backlash is going to get you here. Backlash is going to get you there. You don't want to worry about it. Do it this way. Follow me here for a second. Uh, a bunch of you are scratching your head and the other half of you are figuring it out. I know exactly what you're going to do. Well, here's the thought. Once you've moved over and you've got your tool right here, you climb cut this surface and this surface. You move down and across. Both moves are clockwise dial moves. Both moves. Lift here, put it back over here. Conventional cut this side, conventional cut this side. Both moves are clockwise moves. You don't have to worry about backlash, ever. Do it in segments. Front left, back right. One is a climb corner, one is a conventional corner. There will be no backlash involved. None. Don't worry about it. Just do it. Makes sense, right? Okay. Don't be afraid to climb cut. 
keep your table snugged up, make sure it's a nice light cut. Another thing that helps quite a bit when you do milling, hole positioning, whatever, you've got two cranks on the x-axis, you've got two dials on the x-axis, you might as well have two zeros on the x-axis. Depending on which one is going to be your primary or however you work, set your zero on one dial clockwise, come to this side, set your zero clockwise on this one. So what's clockwise over here is counterclockwise over here by default. Once you move over here, set two zeros. This one, this one. You want to move ten that way, you move ten that way. You want to move ten back this way, move it. Simple. You have to ultimate control because when you set your zeros end to end, you have already rotated the backlash out of one of the two handles. It may sound confusing, but if you try it on your machine, you are pushing into your edge finder on one setup, you are pulling into the edge finder on the other setup, so you may need a projected edge. Y-axis, different story. You only have one way to do it. If you know what your backlash value is, you can mathematically compensate for it, but the best way to do it, the best way that I've seen, and see no other way to do it, is to set up a drop indicator, a no-go arm, a dial indicator, whatever, and physically register on the vise, on the table, whatever, as your zero return point. Two dials, two zeros, third, and an indicator. Off you go. Or climb and conventional. You don't even have to worry about it. I hope that helped. It's a good little insider trick. Good luck. Thanks for watching. Okay, just because I think this is very important that you comprehend what I said about the left candle, right handle, let's take a quick look at the machine. This is my right side crank. Ball up. Left side crank. Ball down. Now sometimes you can't get away with this because these are keyed and maybe the guy had a bad day and they're in line or whatever. If you need to take the key out of one of them to make sure that you can line them up like that, it's a really good idea. That way they're completely neutral and no matter where you put it, the weight is not going to be an issue. If the weight offsets, they will not flop, they won't have a tendency to want to move as they're going. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to eliminate backlash from the worry when you mill along the x-axis. Let's take a look at how that's done. First thing I'm going to do, using the handle on the right side of the machine, I'm going to dial in, kick this edge finder out on this 1, 2, 3 block, and zero the dial. Knowing exactly what the diameter of the edge finder is, I am going to set this dial on 100. So it's a 200 diameter edge finder. When I come back around for zero, that is truly over the edge of the part. All right, that is to the right side dial. We moved into the edge finder on this one, into it. For the left side dial operation, you want to push the edge towards the edge finder from this side. You do not want the edge finder to move into the part. You want the part to move into the edge finder. I'll show you what I mean. We're going to do this with a projected edge. I would normally do this with a clamp, but it's a demonstration, so I'm going to do it with rubber bands. And I am going to be turning the left side crank 
clockwise. I'm going to move the one, two, three block into the edge finder. All right, same thing with this one. Set this one on 100. Because it's a 200 diameter edge finder. Continue the motion clockwise. Zero. All right. Now we have a zero on one side of the block and a zero on the other side of the block. This is relatively difficult to film without somebody else holding this camera. Well, let's take a look at what's going on now. Okay guys, we are coming off the tripod for this one because it is worthy. That edge finder is right directly over the center of that block on zero. Let's say we want to move it this way, one inch, and go back. There you go. Backlash out. We know that we zeroed this dial clockwise in. So when we turn one, two, three, four, five turns of the dial, center of the block. Now you want to go back. If you were to use this one and go back, you'd have to worry about this backlash value. If you use this dial, when we start to go counterclockwise, or excuse me, clockwise, to push this back where it belongs, it's going to freewheel. There it does, freewheel. Until the backlash comes out of it at zero. Now you just go back to the other one. One, two, three, four. Coming back around, or five. Back over the edge. You may have to do this a couple of times before you get a mental and physical grip on exactly what you just watched. But by zeroing both dials in the direction that you want to control the table, one controls the table moving to the right, or excuse me, controls the cut moving to the right, and one controls the cut moving to the left. You never have to worry about backlash that way. On the Y axis, if you know that the cutter is going to be moving towards you, set an indicator right here and bump it against your table for a zero position. As the table moves away, the indicator gap will start to get larger. When you want to come back to where you started, the table moves back into the indicator and you just watch for the dial to come around to zero. Okay, well, I know that's clear as mud, but I hope that helped.